In another lesson, we learned about the seller's principal remedy and the default measure of damages under Article 2. However, in certain circumstances, those remedies may be inadequate to put the seller in as good a position as the buyer's performance would have. In those cases, Article 2 may allow the seller to recover as damages either the seller's lost profits or the contract price. In appropriate cases, Article 2 allows the seller to recover the profit the seller would have made had the buyer fully performed. These damages equal the contract price minus costs saved by the seller due to the breach and any payments or resale proceeds, plus any costs reasonably incurred by the seller and incidental damages. For example, imagine a manufacturer agreed to purchase and sell a wind turbine to a municipality for $5 million. A few weeks later, the municipality repudiated the party's contract. At that time, the manufacturer hadn't completed the turbine but had spent $500,000 acquiring several necessary components. Had the manufacturer completed the turbine, its production costs would have totaled $3 million, and the allocable share of fixed overhead costs would have been $1 million. Post-repudiation, the manufacturer resold the components for $350,000 and incurred $25,000 in resale expenses. Here, the manufacturer's lost profit damages were $2,175,000, derived from the contract price of $5 million minus $3 million in saved production costs and $350,000 in resale proceeds, plus $500,000 for component costs and $25,000 of resale expenses. Note that the $1 million in allocable fixed costs are ignored. Unlike other damage calculations, Fixed and overhead costs, such as rent, taxes, and salaries, aren't deducted from lost profit damages.